This is a at least 6,000-year-old Sumerian text. This thing could be even older than that, and it could also be a copy of a translation that could be 10,000 years old, 50,000 years old, 100,000 years old. Seriously, it's called Anana and On, and this On is the father of the Anunnaki. Inanna is his daughter, Ishtar, Easter. There's some missing lines and there's some missing words, so you know, do your best to connect the dots and fill in the, the spaces. One thing that I find fascinating about this text is it talks about how Inanna takes over on and takes over certain places in space as well as on Earth. So I'll go ahead and read it to you now. <clears throat> Holy Inanna, the hero, youthful Utu. Utu is Inanna's brother. At dead of night, Iana, Inanna, the great heavens, and there's some missing lines. Inanna comes forth from heaven, space. The lady of heaven set her mind to capturing the great heavens. Sounds to me like a solar system that she wants to capture and everything in it, kind of like Jupiter rising. Inanna set her mind to capturing the great heavens. Set her mind to capturing the great heavens from the, then there's a space missing, of heaven, youthful Utu. She set her mind to capturing the great heavens. Holy Inanna spoke to her brother, the hero, youthful Utu. I want to tell you something. Pay attention to my speech, my twin. I want to tell you something. Pay attention to my speech. Her brother, the hero, youthful Utu, answered, Holy Inanna, my sister, I swear an oath by the life of heaven. I swear by the life of the rainbow of heaven. I swear by the life of my throne, by my majesty. I will follow what my sister says to me. I will follow what Holy Inanna says to me. So now not only does her brother pledge allegiance to her as a follower, but it gets even more intense here in a minute. The maiden, the Iron Maiden, <laughs> and Nana answered her brother, the hero, youthful Utu. Then there's something missing. Then she says, my spouse has made love to me, has kissed me. I wanted, hmm, what did she want him to do? Those lines are missing. Maybe they get really, never mind. <laughs> what did she want? Hello, for him, but, and there's something missing again. He did not give it to him. Did she say she wanted a night of just ultimate pleasure and bliss? And, and maybe he... <laughs> so, let's don't go there. All right. I hastened with him, but Majestic On would not give me... Or, I'm sorry. But Majestic On would not give him Iana. The heavens are ours. I say to you, examine. For me, you must observe these instructions. The evil wind the south wind against me. So she just said that she captured Iana from on. Or no, she's saying that the earth is theirs and they need to capture Iana, that it should be captured from her father. So the earth is already theirs. Holy Easter. Let's go find some plastic chocolate bunny eggs because that represents Jesus. Right? Holy Inanna embarked on the barge, the rope, the south wind, that south wind rose up, the evil wind, the evil wind rose up in the distant heavens. High in Hesog, the fishermen, the reed thickets, and the tall reeds. So it sounds to me right there that she is getting direction somewhere. She's basically going through some passageway. There's some more lines missing. Inanna speaks, I the way. Abigbur answered, Holy Inanna, my lady, you cannot. Your divinity, the fisherman, the south wind, my lady, if you travel on the barge and he raises the south wind, that south wind, and he raises the evil wind, that evil wind, barges and small boats will sink in the marshes. Whenever he approached the, with his great net, as it came out of the flood, the swelling sea, it lashed the water 
and made an evil mermaid with laser beam powers and quantum mechanic abilities based on the tell. No, I'm just kidding about that last part. Holy Inanna answered the fisherman, If you are to find Iana, and I am to gaze in admiration at the place you said, the narrow passage. Abigbur answered Holy Inanna, Through the reed thickets and the tall reeds, for you find Iana, which comes forth from heaven. So Iana comes from space. Is it a ship? Is it a technology? Is it a... What is it? I think it's some type of ship that has a lot of technology on it and crew and could be used as like a portable city. Abigbar of Enlil. Though the reed thickets and the tall reeds, she gazed in admiration at Iana, which comes forth from heaven. So she's just fascinated by it. Sulazida, An's herdsman, grasped the cosmic tethering rope in his hands. Cosmic space. After he had brought the forth from the sky, he overcame the protective deities, he, and kept it below the horizon. Now, when I think of this cosmic tethering rope, do you know what's coming to my mind is Wonder Woman and her magic rope and how it's cosmic and how she is a demigod. Having drunk cleansing water from the Alaya River, Inanna stampled, or st sorry, stamped on the scorpion and cut off its tail. Like a lion, it bellowed in an angry roar, but its cries died down. So, I've never heard of a scorpion that screams like a lion. That might be another technology. She threw it and made it secure. Having heard this, or having heard its cries, poured forth the clay of creation, and laid it, the great lady of heaven delivered those words to On. Having heard those words, On slapped his thighs, his voice filled with sighs of grief. What has my child done? She has become greater than me. What has Inanna done? She has become greater than me. From now on, the normal length of daylight becomes shorter, and daylight converts to nighttime. From today, when the day's watch is three units long, daylight is equal to nighttime, and now, when day begins, it was indeed so. On, who created gods and humankind, gazed at holy Inanna and addressed the favorite wife who travels by his side. Unable to describe this arrogance, this arrogance, On was unable to describe to Inanna this arrogance this arrogance. My child, you did not say you were able to capture Iana. Inanna, you did not say you were able to capture Iana. Iana should be as firm as heaven. It should not be toppled. Its attraction should never be exhausted. Its name should be the settlement of the land. It should have no rival. Mankind all of the people should prostrate themselves at her feet and now under the sun and on that day it was indeed so she had captured iana from on she secured she secured it now inana speaks of the iana as the house that is the place of the lady the goddess who has attained her triumphant position Inanna, who has attained her triumphant position, declares the good place. I have captured Iana from on. Because you are unmatched among the great princes, maiden Iron Inanna, praising you is magnificent. So this reminds me of the story that was read on LeakProject.com a few weeks ago, where Ishtar goes up into heaven and demands on give her the cosmic horn, the cosmic bullhorn. Bingo! What kind of horn is that? Now. So, he says, no, you can't have it. She says, you better give it to me or I'm going to rip open the gates of hell and you're going to be sorry. And so, her dad gives her this 
horn, this probably cosmic weapon of some sort, and you read this, and once again, let's give credit where credit is due. Make sure to check out the Oxford Sumerian. I will leave the links in the video description box. These are the project members. They did a great job putting this together as far as the uh, encoding or the translations. You can also translate it yourself because they've got on the website each representation of the, the different words because there's a lot of scribes that haven't been translated yet so you can even do that yourself if you want to spend some quality time and learn how to do it and then that would also benefit with the uh you know it, the more people out there that can actually decipher sumerian or sumerian the better so i find this a fascinating read what's your take on this and what does this mean if ishtar took over on her father and you know that we worship ishtar on easter it's not worshiping jesus like most people think that it is Maybe they are, but that's not what it is. That's never what it was started upon. It's not a part of the, you know, people think that they're worshiping the resurrection of Christ on Easter, and maybe in their minds they are, but that's not what, what Easter is. And I, I, it is really neat, though, isn't it, to go hide all those Easter egg plastic candies, chocolate made in China. Oftentimes you find out that chocolate isn't even really chocolate anymore. But it's just so cute, right? It's it's such a it's such a day of admiration. You know, and even Easter and Ishtar, the representation of this very she gets what she wants, let's just put it that way. And I wonder where she's at now. I wonder what the positions are of on and, and that makes me also realize why we don't hear a lot about on in my opinion, is because, you know, his children ended up being so intense and willing to do just about anything to get what they wanted at the time. Hopefully they've changed, but at least at the time. And, you know, it didn't seem, it seemed like he had a kinder heart, at least from what I've read so far. And I could be wrong. I could pull something up tomorrow that's a, you know, an ancient text, 7,000 years old, that's probably based on something 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 years old or older we often find these stories have been rewritten so many times and if that's the case you know I'll, I'll totally change my position on that it just seems to me like Ishtar is a lot more ruthless Enlil and Enki are a lot more ruthless or at least they were in these writings and maybe things have changed since then and maybe I just haven't done enough research into it yet which definitely could be the case now what's on doing now and Enlil and Enki are they still around why wouldn't they be? It's fascinating to think about, indeed. And hey, maybe maybe they've changed. You know, I was thinking about that, like we've done the Darth Vader analogy, about how even Darth Vader changed at the end before his physical passing. And maybe that's what they're attempting to do is transition. Maybe not, though, because you look at the world around you and it just looks it looks like there's so many systems of dark ecstasy that feed off of keeping people suppressed and sick and in pain that it makes you question the higher motives of the clandestine controllers and you know wouldn't it be neat if there was some type of spray to wipe out the serpent archons <laughs> those that you can't see well there is and it's a spray of vibration of sound what is it what is that word? What is that sound? Hue! Maybe that's what it is. I remember one time. <laughs> all right, I'll share this story with you guys. Why not? So I was in a, in a hotel, and the I was attempting to do a podcast. And every time I would start talking, the air conditioner would turn on. And even though I turned it off and it was on off, wasn't on automatic, it was completely on off, every time I would go sit down, and I would, I, would, I would hit record, and I'd start to talk again, and then the thing would turn back on. It was really noisy, so I had to stop. And then I would get up, and I would walk over there, and it would shut off before I could even get to it. And it happened a half dozen times, approximately. I know it happened at least five or six times. So <laughs> I finally just like, what is this? And there was some things earlier in the day that I was around that were very paranormal, to say the least. So I felt like something was definitely there, and I didn't know if it was good or bad. And, and now that I look back at it, I don't think it was anything bad, but it was definitely something trying to get my attention. <laughs> I 
or, or maybe it was just the people downstairs uh, that are working in the, the hotel lobby and they had a hidden camera there and they had a you know Bluetooth system set up with their uh, air conditioning unit that even though it was completely turned off, it kept turning back on when I would literally go sit down. And then when I would get up to go turn it off, it would turn off again. Then I would go sit down and turn back on, get up. And, it, and you know, maybe that was all just a coincidence or maybe they were, you know, they had some hidden camera and they just wanted to mess with me because they thought it was funny. Or, you know, maybe it was some black ops thing or maybe it was all just a fragment of my imagination. And <laughs> so I, I finally, I got a little bugged out. So I just went, phew, and I did that for a few seconds and then it stopped. And then I was able to finish my podcast and kumbaya and it was all good. So maybe that's the word. Maybe that's the magic word. And maybe not. So question everything. Thank you for being here with me. Make sure to become a member at leakproject.com. You'll get access to exclusive content. And make sure to support our sponsors. Go to getthetea.com. They have a plethora of awesome, healthy products. Very good supplements for everything from uh, digestive health, skin care, immune support. They've got different um, elixirs as well. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Check them out. Use the code LEAKPROJECT and be the change you want to see.